Uh, thanks a lot for, for the invitation, uh, Josep, and uh, I hope that my contribution will be useful. I just uh, uh, been told that uh, last year there have been two uh, proposals approved for uh, UPF, uh, which is a very good score, actually. UPF is not uh, a big, uh, a very big university. It's a very, it's a medium-sized university, and having two uh, out of the very few proposals uh, approving every year is a very important and very promising score. And uh, a lot of proposals have been of the very, of very high level, uh, which means that there is merge to improve the score and uh, have a higher. Uh, uh, achievements this this year and this uh, in this call. So, first of all, I would like to give you an idea of what uh, uh, the concept is uh, of the Marie Curie. Uh, Marie Curie is part of a wider set of programs for the development of European research, and the idea is to promote uh, researchers' mobility, training, and excellence in Europe. Please note that the important thing uh, here is mobility, research, and training. Uh, mobility and training. Other way, you could do this research without moving of your country. The way, the reason for which the European Union pays that is because you are moving out of your country and that you are going to be trained in something that you cannot learn in your country, in, the, in your university. Uh, actually, there are three things. Uh, that usually the applicants confuse. One is the research they want to do, uh, which is very respectful and very interesting every time. Uh, but uh, this is not what is going to make you to win. Uh, 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 you have to consider what the one who pays for wants to listen uh, and why it is paying uh, so much money for that. Uh, and probably it is not only for your research uh, objective, which can be very interesting, very reliable, but it has some other reasons that wants to uh, spend uh, taxpayers' money in this effort. And the second is what, and the third is what the evaluators are going to do, yeah? are, are expecting to see in your proposals, and are guided to evaluate in your proposals. So these three aspects. Uh, are uh, generally uh, sometimes contradictive. And in your effort, you have to resolve this contradiction, taking into account what you really want to do, uh, but having always in mind that you will not have the opportunity to do it if you don't uh, persuade the one who pays and the one who evaluates that this worths the effort and the money spent on that following his own uh, criteria that are different from your, yours, uh, probably. So uh, just make that uh, emotional part out, which is what you really want to do. And you have to focus that you, you have to win in order to do it. Huh? That's the uh, basic thing. So uh, <coughs> uh, the panels. Uh, that are proposed. You know them uh, following your science. I'm not going to guide you through your topics. I'm coming from a domain which is uh, digital uh, applications and research in cultural heritage. So uh, that's my uh, uh, field of uh, research uh, and local development. So if you have any questions on that, I can help you. I cannot help you if you are in chemistry or <laughs> and uh, it's not my I point, but uh, the evaluation process is the same for all uh, kind of uh, topics. Um, and you can see the main uh, uh, funding, uh, the main uh, spending from the Commission, say the main effort is from the, for the standard European fellowships. Uh, that is the, uh, what Jose told before, uh, it was in 2015, 7,900. 139 proposals uh, in the overall received in this uh, topic. I will come back later about that. Uh, and the career restart uh, is further more limited and in also in money uh, available and the integration panel uh, uh, also. And uh, the society and enterprise panel has only 
uh, and it has in the overall 205 uh, million euros uh, available for this for the first panel. Uh, the society and enterprise panel had, uh, uh, wait, I don't see, uh, a budget of 10 million euros and one, 134 proposals in 2015. Uh, so I'm moving forward. Uh, actually, you have to think like that. Me, in this case, I have 20 to 30 minutes to make your presentation, and my objectives are to give you an idea of what Marie Curie fellowships are, uh, to explain you the evaluation process of your proposals and the priorities, and finally to give some advice if it's worth the effort to participate and some tips to maximize, to maximize your chances. My objective is not to give you details and a complete training. You can evaluate my effort after the end of this presentation. I tell you that because you have to enter in this tip, in this idea, when you are writing your proposal. Somebody is going to read it. You have to make clear from the beginning what your objectives are. Uh, the first thing that it is asked in the presentation of the, uh, in, uh, are the general objectives of your, uh, of your uh, project. Uh, the first thing that an evaluator, evaluator reads is your objectives. Uh, so first, the objectives have to be uh, relevant and have to be reachable. Uh, you, you, you have to prove that you can, and they have to be appealing, and they have to present an idea that makes sense. And then at the end, reading the next paragraphs and the implementation plan and the impact and uh, all what is requested, the researcher will evaluate if these objectives are uh, well explained and are, are persuasive, persuasively presented in order to be implemented in the project. So uh, this is what you have to think about uh, when you are writing your proposal. <clears throat> I have followed, I have participated in uh, about uh, four or five evaluation processes and some uh, additional that are in between in uh, small, and this is where my experience is coming from in my field. Uh, uh, and I'm going straight to the criteria. Uh, as uh, Josep explained before, the first thing is the quality and credibility of the research uh, and innovation and the inter-multidisciplinary and gender aspects. Concerning uh, the research and innovation, it has to be good. Huh? It has to be proven that you know very well what the, the state of the art is, and you have to be clear in your objectives. However, it, have, it has also to be appealing. Uh, if, if you put yourself in the place of an evaluator, if he reads something that he likes, he always will try to find on, on the back of his hand, on, of his head, something that is more helpful for you. Uh, if it is something that inspires, he can defend you. He will, you, you will have him on your side. He will not, he will not ignore uh, the missing things, isn't it? But he has emerged to, to push forward or to insist if something is uh, important or less important. So you have to win him. Hmm? And this is very important from the, first, uh, from the beginning of your proposal. That sounds appealing. It's a good idea. Uh, the second is that you have to remember that this is mainly not a research, but a training project. What that means, training? It means that uh, you have not only to say that I'm going to be trained uh, for something, uh, but you have to explain why you're going to be trained, what you know, actually, and what additional skills, concretely, you are going to achieve through the, throughout this training, and how you are going to achieve them. Uh, let me give you an example. We have an archaeologist, for example, who is going to make uh, a research in GPS systems and uh, uh, the application in, in uh, the archaeology for reconstructing ancient sites. Uh, he has been formed as an archaeologist. 
he has some experience on that, and he wants to make, to make a project where he needs some additional informatic skills. Huh? He has to be clear on that. He has to say that I know these things, and I want to learn those things. Those things are offered in the university I'm asking to go. Uh, it's not, uh, you have to justify why you are going there. And uh, I'm going to bring them to this university, my experience as archaeologist, that I have worked in this kind of uh, specific aspects, and the university which I'm going to will take advantage also of my experience, and then you have to say how you are going to do that. Uh, you have to be clear that he's going to follow some training courses, or it will be hands-on training, or it will be inside training, on that he, or that he's going to teach or provide some seminars there. Uh, it's not sufficient to say that I'm going to get these GIS skills. You have to be clear and persuasive. It means that the university you're going has also uh, these uh, skills and can offer it to you. That's uh, one of the uh, basic tips is that you have to be concrete. Uh, the, the generalities uh, generally are not persuasive and the typical things that we are uh, instructed to write <laughs> is uh, uh, the proposal is not persuasive in that point, is not clear enough, is not sufficiently detailed. Uh, and it's, it is not a question of space. You do not need a lot of space. You need a lot the right words. Huh? <laughs> the, the, you can write a lot without say, saying anything. But if you say, I'm going to do three courses huh, of GIS uh, uh, location and I will get these informatic skills, you need just half a, half a, half a line huh, or one line. But it is clear, it's evident, and it can be evaluated. Uh, when you don't say something, it is also evaluated. Silence in, in specific topics uh, is a point, <laughs> is, is, is part of your evaluation. Second is the, uh, uh, the quality of the supervision and the integration in the team institution. Uh, that is something that is also sufficiently uh, clear that you have to talk about, and the capacity of the researcher to reinforce uh, the position of professional maturity and independence. Uh, what that means, in your opinion, what do you imagine on that when somebody says the capacity to, to research uh, to reach or reinforce the position of professional maturity? Actually, they, they are not asking you or, 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 or of a psychological profile. Uh, they are asking you of something very concrete, uh, that I'm going to improve my uh, general skills and I'm going to improve my professional perspectives. And I'm going to do that that way. Uh, this is what uh, the evaluator is expecting to read in this, uh, in this precise uh, point. Um, the impact, I'm not going to insist a lot because it has been uh, uh, pre presented a lot uh, and very, very in, in details from the previous speaker. Uh, but certainly what you have to insist and that it was very well uh, said is that uh, is the involvement uh, of the uh, society. European Union is very uh, interested in the involvement of uh, the European society and explaining why uh, to the society, not only to the research community, why the taxpayers' money are going there. Uh, the, uh, the, you have to go be behind the, the thought of, of the, of the policy makers, and they're, they're very well doing. I mean, uh, somebody is paying for that, so he has to know. Uh, the involvement of the local communities, if your project has this aspect, the involvement of the people, the media involvement, the social media, the um, press, uh, whatever you can imagine that could increase visibility, uh, depending of course on your project, is a very, very important aspect. Uh, 
uh, and uh, naturally the involvement of the scientific community and uh, uh, that's uh, it's not uh, necessary to insist it also has to be quantified uh, I've seen a lot of proposals that they have proposed uh, everything has to be sufficiently quantified that they have proposed uh, uh, activities that are not persuasive because they are not quantified uh, when you say I'm going to make a, a seminar I'm going to make an open uh, event uh, I'm going to make whatever you are thinking you have to provide some figures so how many people will know about that What's the objective? How many? Uh, what's the community you, you want to reach? The size, the order of magnitude, at least, at least of the people and uh, the target audiences, um, and uh, the quality uh, uh, and the efficiency of the implementation plan. Uh, I will insist that uh, here in um, a very tricky thing. Uh, that is the risk management. Uh, they are insisting a lot in evaluating the risks, the risks of the implementation of the project. Uh, probably there are no risks uh, at all, uh, but if any, it's important to know, not because it will dissuade the people, but it will make your proposal more persuasive. If somebody thinks of a risk that you have not mentioned, it's a minus. You can lose one point from that, or two. Uh, if you lose one or two points, you can lose your proposal for nothing. Uh, and there are risks. There are people who are using, for example, data. Uh, you have to be clear where your data are coming from. Uh, I have read a lot, a lot of proposals that were saying that we're going to use this kind of data, but it was not clear if they have access to this data. Um, just to give you an example, uh, it can be many things. I'm going to make a research in a site, in an archaeological site or in an env environmental site, and it is not clear if he is going to have access in this site uh, for various reasons, uh, uh, permises, administrative uh, uh, restrictions, uh, weather, uh, availability of the data. Uh, all these are risks that have to be sufficiently persuasively explained to the evaluator to be sure that if, even if that happens, something happens, you have a B, B plan, a uh, plan B, uh, where you can uh, deal with that uh, in another way. And uh, 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 of course, you have to talk about the appropriateness of the institutional environment and infrastructure. That's not uh, difficult, and I'm sure that uh, uh, the services of, uh, of uh, the university can assist you on that and your uh, supervisor for what you are doing. But also here you have to justify why uh, your research fits to that university, fits to the infrastructure that are available. Uh, that gives you points to be more precise. Uh, I'm not going to insist in the uh, uh, CV. Uh, and uh, as uh, correctly said uh, Jose, in the ECOSOC, for example, uh, you have to reach the zone of 4.5 to 5 to all criteria at the upper scale of 95 uh, to 100 in order to get uh, chances to be funded, which means that you can have a very good proposal that will not be funded. Huh? Uh, so. When we are coming to evaluate a proposal, and that's uh, very important to, to know, and this is the, uh, I'm going to open you a standard example of the individual evalu evaluation report that uh, an evaluator, evaluator is receiving, is this exactly a uh, thing that has to fill in. Uh, and in each one of the points, uh, we need to write something. If you do not offer that clearly, uh, it's a mess. It makes the life of the evaluator difficult. And if he has to look for and he cannot find any justification, he will have to write something that probably he will write it under weaknesses and not, not under strengths. Uh, 
So we all write points under two, uh, these two main uh, uh, titles. So, uh, and we need to write something, if, even if the proposal is very good, we have to write strengths. Your strengths must be clear. Uh, and if a weakness, is, a weakness appear in the proposal, uh, then uh, how it works? The three evaluators are looking their weaknesses that each one has found in, in the proposal, and they compare them. And then they are talking, uh, uh, and uh, they have to find the consensus that this is really a weakness, or it isn't, or probably it is a strength. Uh. So the, the first approach is to find any weaknesses. Uh, uh, as far as you address the, all the aspects, you make more difficult to find weaknesses. And each weakness can be uh, 0 0.1 up to 0 0.5 points, depends on the, on the gravity of the thing. Uh, uh, but if you mark something, it has to, re to reflect to your, uh, to your uh, score, actually. So uh, you see here that there are, in each one, uh, there is a, a different criterion for, for, for each one sub-criterion that are generally presented before, which is, for example, extent to which the researcher will gain new knowledge in the hosting uh, uh, organizations during the fellowship through training, extent to which the hosting organization may also benefit from the uh, researcher, how the knowledge previously acquired will be transferred to the host organization. Uh, so these, what I told you before, are points that the evaluators are called, are, are, are obliged to answer. And you must give them the answers prepared, <laughs> if you want to convince them. Uh, same applies for the quality of the supervision, uh, qualification of experience of the uh, supervisors, hosting arrangements, uh, and uh, the capacity of the researcher. Uh, don't forget that uh, the evaluators are also, they have their own preferences. They are coming from various scientific fields. They are not uh, all of the same uh, scientific origin. So uh, you have to be sufficiently uh, clear for them to understand what you really want to do. And uh, you have to take them on your side, not to have them against them. You do not have to somehow insult uh, a kind of, I, I don't say insult directly, but uh, you don't have to be uh, aggressive in your proposal any, uh, against any kind of scientific approach. You don't know who, is going, who you are going to, uh, to have as an evaluator. Uh, it's better to avoid any negative um, uh, points and insist on your positive points on your proposal. I've seen a lot of proposals also with negative points and uh, uh, this bad, I don't know, uh, um, uh, organized um, historians or archaeologists or whatever. It's, it's, it's not, you have only to lose. Huh? We have nothing to win insisting in the, in the negative things. You have to be very positive in the proposal. Uh, I'm going back to the presentation. Uh, here you can see, uh, the link does not work, uh, here, yes, it works. As you can see, the evaluators, they have a kind of uh, merging uh, thing. Uh, that's a, f a picture of an existing proposal. I don't have uh, explicitly the name or whatever. Uh, so you can see how the evaluators are beginning the negotiation uh, before the proposal which is, for example, the first had 4.2, 4.4, 5, the other 4.5, 4.55, 5, and this can uh, end up uh, to a 4.9. Uh, it's not necessarily that uh, it's the average of the evaluators. 
is uh, the question of who is more persuasive in his uh, aspects, and of course they are, they are obliged to negotiate and see clearly if their first opinion was the right one or not. Uh, and this is, for example, uh, some of the points that are writing in the first uh, uh, lecture uh, that the supervisor is a top expert in the field, the hosting provisions are clearly explained, the university has an established track, or, or concerning the research objectives, uh, is very clearly explained before starting a field work in the research will be trained a number of additional skills. You see, this is what uh, the, the evaluators are looking for. Uh, they are uh, directed to this, uh, uh, to this uh, uh, direction. So, uh, they uh, take also uh, in, keep in mind also that they have a, a very limited time uh, and they have very strong views sometimes, and uh, so you have to facilitate them the life. Uh, you have to put what is under each one of the paragraphs. In the, paragraphs, in the paragraph, they have to find it. I, I liked a lot one proposal once, uh, and it was a very good proposal. Um, I, I tried to, to support it because it was a really good proposal, uh, but the guy had uh, a lot of uh, information in other uh, places than where it had to, to go. Uh, so it, it made my life very difficult uh, to look for. I don't like, nobody wants to be uh, unjust and to not evaluate properly, uh, but uh, they are doing, we are doing our work too. So if I have to look all over your text to find what is, it should be in the risk, uh, and I, I know that I've seen it, uh, it can happen that you can have somebody that he's so uh, um, insistive and he, he wants to help you and he will try to find it, but it can happen that you can have somebody that is more indifferent in your proposal and if he does not see that un under the risk, he's not going to look for it in other places of your proposal. So you have to be very careful to facilitate the life of the one who is in the work of the one who's reading it. So let's go to the statistics and then uh, I would be happy to, to answer any questions. Uh, as you can see, uh, the statistics are not very uh, encouraging in the first view. In the first view, just keep that in mind. Huh? Because uh, uh, the number of proposals is very important, uh, it's huge, and the funded proposals are far less. You can see here uh, the average estimate uh, of the um, proposals that uh, are submitted every year. Uh, that was 7,139. Uh, 7, and I will open you the approved ones, which are very low, lower rate, if you consider the overall of the proposals. It is here. Uh, sorry, I will need to make it a little bit bigger for you. So you can see here, for example, that in the uh, ECOSOC, uh, there were 197 proposals, uh, and uh, we had uh, only, uh, how many are there? About 10, uh, if I count correctly. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, about 10, 11 approved, uh, which is uh, at 10%. Uh. Uh, so, uh, same, it is online, this table. You can find it in the side of, of the Marie Curie in the European Commission. Uh, it's the cumulative percentage of proposals uh, that was given a higher score. And you can also see where the approval approximately starts uh, the, the successful proposal. However, uh, is not uh, at the end, no more than 16.8% uh, uh, will find their way to funding in 2014, for example. Uh, the rate has not really changed in the next uh, years. 
How, however, the real statistics are different. I, I, I don't want to disappoint you and discourage you. Uh, a small number of proposals is rejected for administrative uh, issues, as you have seen, uh, about uh, 100 in each topic. Another part, which is not insignificant, uh, is below or around the threshold. Uh, and that's very important. That's about 30%, 35%. Uh, these are not your competitors. Uh, uh, there are a lot of people, because it's easy, you can enter, you can put some stuff in. I've seen uh, terrible things, uh, some newspapers, and copy them and you can make a proposal. Mm? If you find a, a, a rather uh, com com complacent, uh, somehow, university, which is not rare, I, and I have seen that from good universities too, uh, you can put your proposal on. They say, we don't have nothing to lose. I, I don't agree with this approach because uh, uh, the supervisors and the universities have to lose. They lose of their reputation if they put a, a lot of trash in the system. Huh? Uh, that's, that's important. Eh? They, they play their... Uh, I will tell you a story. I was once... I've seen one proposal that was coming from one very important... Uh, uh, American institution. Uh, it was in the uh, global uh, stuff, and it was involved on a very important. I don't say the name, uh, but one of the ones that are really uh, very, very known. And there was a guy who wanted to make a kind of uh, project that was uh, study uh, a musician, a world. Uh, uh, in kind of art project, uh, 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 presenting it as a scientific work. And uh, the presentation was really trash. Uh, it was nothing. I'm going to do that with no explanations, with, with, with anything, uh, without anything, uh, just uh, like mocking, I don't know. Uh, and it happened to have one evaluator that was uh, a British guy, he was rather old, he was very insistent, and he entered saying that, look, that's a great proposal, that's for five in everything. So I said, well, the other two were looking like what, what this guy says, I mean, he, that's, that's trash. Uh, at the end, finally, we finalized that it was trash, uh, because we said that, uh, okay, if you believe that, paid from your own from your own money, <laughs> from your salary. I don't think that the European Commission is paying us and you in order to say that this is, uh, this is something that has to be funded. But uh, uh, at the end, there are a lot that are not so, so bad, but uh, that are just not worked enough, uh, or they don't deserve. So these are out of your competitors. There is another uh, 30% that is well enough, it has been, uh, it is over the, the, the uh, threshold, but it is not uh, to be funded. As you have seen, uh, only the best are funded. So uh, if you want to invest work uh, and be in that uh, uh, tranche of the, of the evaluation, it's, mm, I don't recommend it to you. Uh, because you will invest work and you will not get any chances to be funded. Uh, the, this is the vast majority of the proposals. And there is a 30% that can be funded, that are the best, the best of the best. Which means that only if you really want to make a very good proposal, which means to invest time and effort to address all the criteria, to propose something that is consistent. It will take you one or two months of full-time job, uh, full-time work. Uh, then you have chances to be funded. And in this case, you are in the 30%. So your approval uh, chances are about 30% uh, if you have a very good proposal. These are your competitors. If you don't, uh, you don't uh, uh, think to, to try to do a very good work, uh, you are just losing your time. If you really are decided to do a good work, you have chances. Uh, that's that's my, my advice. Uh, 
if you submit a trust proposal, you, you're not going to lose anything. Uh, but, okay, what for? I mean, uh, <laughs> except, except of your dignity, probably. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, just uh, um, recapitulating, uh, this is a trained action. You have to prove how to train. Not only you need an adequate supervisor uh, and, uh, and, and corresponding institution, but you must prove it. Uh, you must prove that you know how to implement your uh, proposal. You need to address all the topics. Uh, uh, you need to be uh, positive, however boring they seem to you. Uh, don't forget that is, this is taxpayers' money, and you have to persuade that it is it worth to be to be paid. Uh, don't uh, tire the evaluators. Make them their life easy to find everything they want, maximize in all criteria the strengths and no significant weaknesses are allowed for winners, for winners usually. You can have weaknesses, but if you have significant weaknesses in, in whatever of the criteria, you're not going to be approved. Uh, so don't be afraid to have some weaknesses, you will have, but if you forget something important, you will lose it. Uh, you have to cover all the aspects of the proposal to, to get it sufficiently. So thank you a lot. You will need also a, 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 some, some luck. Uh, that's clear. <laughs> <laughs> that's clear. <laughs>
No, no. If I may, um, if you apply into the um, uh, European Fellowship, you will be evaluated, of course, by experts yeah. on your topic. Then each panel has its own ranking. Exactly. However, if you are going to career restart or uh, reintegration panels, you are still evaluated by, by professionals of your topic. However, all the relations are put in the same pot then, and just the best ones are, are funded. So it may be that one year all of them are from humanities, or the next year maybe there's no, no one of that. Uh, this is more to, say, to prove, yeah, because it's an administrative issue, uh, actually. Um, what they use is, if, um, I mean, if you've been 11 months, which is quite in, on the border, you should prove that, for, I don't know, um, for instance, using labor contracts or um, the, re the rental contract of the apartment where you're living in the other country, that you've only been here for, for 11 months. Uh, Uh, they are quite uh, specific with that. So, if you've been, like, in, if you write here the 13th September 2016, you've been one year and two days. So, you should not be, you will not be eligible. Then it depends on how good you are at kind of trying to, <laughs> to move the date. <laughs> yeah. That, this cannot it, be proven, this kind of small, uh, it's not necessary. But if in your CV appears uh, that uh, you have been there for, for a contract, you were working there, okay, it's, it's obvious, Some, somebody will see it. I mean, it's, if you cross the border, it's not that. Yeah, so we've had, for example, one case of one person who was from a Nordic country, and she had a contract in, in that country, and, but was actually working here. What she did was, okay, she showed her contract in, for the other uni university, even though she was actually living here. Mm, that's kind of tricky yeah. things. Uh, it's, I mean, we can help in that, but it's a like, really personalized uh, uh, yeah. topic. We, maybe we can talk later about that. Yeah, and keep in mind that there is an underground always thinking of the evaluators. It's not an official criteria. It depends a lot how everybody takes it, but if you see, for example, a proposal of somebody who uh, is from uh, Spain and he has studied here, he spent just the right period to be away uh, in, uh, in Germany, and then he applies to go back to the same university, to the same place where he has been, even though it is permitted, uh, it makes not uh, so many sense. Uh, it has to be, you have to be very persuasive uh, to, to, to make him understand the, the, the people that, okay, he doesn't do that because he wants to go home, but he, he does it because he really has something to learn there that he cannot learn somewhere else. Uh, okay, so uh, it, it's not an official evaluation, but everybody has that in mind when he reads a proposal. You, you should have it, you could have it in this, if you were in the place of the one who's reading it and you, you were trying to find if this is true or not. So certainly uh, the idea is to be very persuasive why you, are to go, you want to go there. Uh, scientifically speaking, professionally speaking, uh, it can be uh, a, 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 an objective, no, because I have being proposed a place in the university and it will open a, a position in three years from now, if you can be so clear, and I want to prepare and be ready to integrate in this position. That's an argument, huh? if it is accompanied by other arguments, but you have to be very clear.
for this uh, for all this information. I was wondering, you talked about bottlenecks a few times. Could you maybe name what that is? Because I can imagine that that's something that if you don't have the experience, you don't know that these things can go wrong. Like you name, for example, this thing with the data, you need to really think about where is your data going to come from. Yeah, you have to persuade the evaluator that uh, you have uh, all the necessary uh, access uh, to, to infrastructure or data or whatever is available, that depends on your field, I don't know your field, for example, or your idea, that uh, makes your, uh, your research uh, feasible. Uh, that's, that has to be clear. Uh, and it has to be even quantified. I can give you many examples, uh, such as guys that they wanted to study, for example, a, a number of uh, manuscripts uh, that were split around the world, or uh, and they had to prove somehow that they will have access to these manuscripts. They have an agreement with the museums that they have these manuscripts, uh, how they are going to use them. It's their IPR issues, how they are going to treat with them. Uh, are they going to make photos? Just to give you an example, in other cases, in economic, uh, for example, um, proposals I've read, they were talking about um, the development of new indices and that they were talk going to use data that they are going to collect from uh, local communities, so they have to prove that they have access to this data. Uh, um, you have to be uh, very persuasive that you have uh, what you are saying to you are doing going to do, uh, or permission in archaeological site. I'm talking from my uh, for my field. Thank you. You're welcome. Sorry. Uh, no, the first I didn't. I didn't. Hear. No, no, to the to the department, to to what you are going to use, and the supervisor. That means the infrastructure of the university. If you are going to work in chemistry with Pompeo Fabra, uh, you have to say why in chemistry spe specifically Pompeo Fabra. I'm I'm just taking an example. Has a the, ne the necessary infrastructures and skill and skills, and your supervisor can add you can uh, help you on that. And of course, there is a part that is the integration in the university, which is the, the infrastructure that the university offers to the offers to the hosts. But this is another thing: is how it will help you to adapt to the environment, how it will help you to to be integrated in the city, uh, and in these kind of things. I think that. Uh, Pompeo has a very good um, support for, for the students and can be uh, used uh, as a description. Of course, of course, and it's very good also. I, I, did, I forgot uh, to, to, to say about the secondments that are very important, but they have also to be justified. It's not I'm going there uh, and I'm going to make a practice. What are you going to do in your practice? Are you going to be trained? Are you going to be, well, as, as you said, uh, which is a very good idea, I'm going to collect data because they have this data and they're available to give them to me, and I'm going to, to, to use them in my research. So you have the second, the, the second means must make sense uh, in your research, uh, or in your skills, or in both. Not just mention that I'm going to this company, for example, and I'm going to, to be generally accepted and trained without explaining what we are going to do there. That depends on the kind of the proposal. If your proposal is a social science proposal, 
uh, I don't think that you must uh, put, uh, you, you must mention some social objectives, of course, general objectives. And I would go to the but, uh, you can also mention them in, in, in the, if they are important, if, for example, in the scientific excellence, uh, uh, you're talking about multidisciplinarity, isn't it? And you're going to make a biology research uh, to improve, um, I don't know, something medical, isn't it? Uh, one of your objectives can be, uh, general objectives in the proposal, can be how you will improve the um, link of the uh, biology results with the rate of the understanding of vaccination of the society. Uh, it can certainly be, if you have actions in this direction, uh, you can mention it. That depends on, on, on the concept of your proposal. That's a rather tricky question. Eh? <laughs> yeah, uh, in principle, there is, it's not so flexible. For major changes, you need to make a contract amendment if you change uh, something that is major in your project, uh, because you sign a contract. When the proposal is approved, what is signed actually is your proposal by the Commission, and it is attached to a contract saying that I'm going to implement this proposal and not another one. And uh, the uh, reviewers that uh, are called to evaluate your proposal, they're going to read what you have written and they're going to see uh, what you have produced. So uh, if this what you produced is different from what you have proposed, you will have a problem. Uh, there is a kind of flexibility, of course, if there is an advance of the science and this kind of stuff, but major major changes need, uh, uh, which is heavy procedure, and I don't recommend it. I mean, it's 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 a nightmare. There is this CV that presented in uh, Josep in the, in the presentation. However, the evaluators are free to evaluate the CVs in uh, following their, uh, their own criteria, which means that uh, they have to relationate the CV of the evaluator to the research that he is doing. This is the concept. Uh, it's not that he's uh, very good or not good. But uh, as as uh, individual uh, CV, uh, but if this CV fits to the project, for example, if I see in your CV that uh, you have um, worked only in uh, in the archaeological field on, as a historian, and suddenly you are going to do uh, a very advanced multi multidisciplinary uh, research. Uh, going towards uh, museology and uh, uh, social implication in, in, in local development in, in uh, archaeological sites. Uh, that does not exactly fit. Huh? You have to prove that you have done something at least at that direction. You don't start from nothing. Huh? And then how you improve your skills in this direction. Uh, of course, it is appreciated to have some publications in, in peer-reviewed journals, uh, to have uh, participation in, in uh, to have teaching experience uh, is important in some cases in order to be able to transfer your knowledge. But there are no standards actually uh, to say ah, if you don't have that, you cannot go on. Uh, 
it depends on your proposal uh, a lot. And also in the evaluator's uh, views sometimes. I'll just check if someone from Twitter said something, but I think otherwise we can just. Okay, so no questions on Twitter. So I think we can finish. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thanks, Georges. Thank you too, and uh, good luck, really. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right.